Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 10th, 2024. I'm teaching a series on purpose, on fixed purpose, on the fact that God has a fixed purpose for you. God has a fixed purpose for me, and that here in 2024, there's actually a purpose for this particular season, and we're going to live our lives with a laser focus on our fixed purpose purpose. I've been teaching that all year. I spent the first three months of the year laying the foundation. I like to teach by both precept and example. I believe that sometimes I give you principles, principles, precepts, all of this, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept. Then I give you examples. And and it's like the examples bring these things to life. So I taught you for three months on purpose, purpose, purpose. And now we're looking at examples. The first one is Joseph. And we're looking at the fact that God revealed Joseph's purpose to him in a dream. And he had to have a laser focus on that fixed purpose. The title of today's message is Unlock Your God-Given Purpose. Put in the chat, I unlock my God-given purpose. I'm not a mistake. I have a purpose and I'm going to live my life in such a way that I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to unfold it and it will manifest right before my, my very eyes. I will leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased, not because of me, but because of the grace of God. Let's get ready for the word of God this morning. Get ready to receive. All right, so as we look at biblical characters, we see that all of these people had a purpose. Like, you know, uh, David said, like an open book, you saw all the stages of my life before I ever lived one day. So you're saying, hey, I was born with a purpose. Paul said, before or from my mother's womb, you call me to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so obviously I was born with a purpose. Um, Isaiah said, you call me from my mother's womb and you call me by name, right? Obviously, I had a purpose. You said to Jeremiah, Lord, uh, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you and I already had sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet. So obviously, he had a purpose. Obviously, we're all born with a purpose and our job is to find it, follow it, and finish it before we die, to discover it, develop in it, and deploy into it to leave the mark in this world that would, will not easily be erased so that we can accomplish what God sent us to this world to accomplish. Proverbs chapter four and verse 25. We've been looking at it all year. This is what it says. Set your gaze. Say, I set my gaze. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Another passage we've been looking at for a while now is James chapter one, verses two through four. This is what it says. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Oh, that's good. That's a good word right there for many people. Verse three, for you know that when your faith is tested, it actually develops in you the power to endure all things. Verse four, and then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection. Perfection is the word maturity there. Put in the chat, I'm mature into every part of your being until there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. So I can get to the point where I am spiritually mature and there's nothing missing and nothing lacking in my life. Say amen to that. Genesis chapter 39, uh, this passage here just deals with the fact that Joseph's brothers sold him as a slave to a bunch of Midianites, uh, Ishmaelites that were passing by, and then they took him to Egypt, and then they sold him as a slave again to a guy named Potiphar. And it just so happens that Potiphar was working directly for Pharaoh, And this was all part of God's plan. And it just so happens that as Joseph was there, he started working and Potiphar saw that everything Joseph did was successful because God was with him, the Bible says. And so Joseph had favor with Potiphar and Potiphar put him in charge of the whole property. 
and everything. And then the Bible says that the Lord blessed Potiphar and blessed his property, blessed his fields because Joseph was there. And, and then Potiphar left everything to Joseph's care and his command. The only thing that Potiphar worried about was what to eat every day, right? And so this happened because Joseph started to walk in his divine purpose. So what does this mean for you today? I have four things to share with you in this morning. As I get in, into these four things, I want you to open up your heart to receive. Y'all ready? This is where I start teaching. I need you to lock in. Number one, God predestined you. Now, I spent three months teaching you this. Now, I just need to reiterate it. God predestined you. Say, I'm not a mistake. Put that in the chat. I am not a mistake. A key aspect of learning how to wait on God, waiting for the next level, waiting, waiting for the next phase, for the manifestation of what's next, is knowing that God has a plan. Say, say this, say God, not only does God have a plan, but God has a plan for me. God has a plan with my name on it. God has a plan with Rick Pina on it. There's a book in heaven with my name on it. And, and, and there's things in there that are destined for me from the foundations of the world. And so, like I said, we spent the first three months of the year studying this point and driving it home. Uh, but I just need to kind of share a couple of more things with you related to that right now. So you are not a mistake. There is a sovereign God who made predetermined plans for your existence. Not only that, but he called you for a purpose and you are pre-wired to accomplish it. This means that you are gifted. Say, I'm gifted. You are gifted with things that are innate, like natural to you, that align with your divine purpose. You have innate gifts that are connected to what God has called you to do. I have innate gifts as well that are connected to what God has called me to do. There's some things that I'm just graced to do, right? Even from a little kid, I was, I was able to connect with blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians. I was cool with the blacks and Puerto Ricans that were doing hip hop. I was cool with the Dominicans with merengue. I was cool with Ecuadorians and Salvadorians and Venezuelans. I was cool with the Jamaicans and the Trinidadians, right? I was one of the only kids that was cool with everybody, right? Because God has called me to be all things to all people so that through me, some might get saved. Uh, so there's this grace, there's an anointing on my life to deal with with rich and poor, general and private, CEOs and janitors. You know, I can, I can minister to everybody, but that's innate. That was in me. Another thing that, that is innate to me is I can look and process complex information and be able to digest complex information and then simplify the complex. I can communicate the complex in a way that is simple. And that's a gift. I mean, like, I, I don't take credit for it. I can just process it. Why? Because I'm called to do that. You were predisposed for your destiny in the spirit and you didn't even know it. See, as you live your life, as, you, as you're living your life, you, you discover things that just seem natural to you that other people struggle to do but you're not struggling to do it at all. These things are just natural to you. They are innate to you. Why? Because it's part of your divine assignment. You are pre-wired to do it. You, you are walking in uh, and you get a level of passion and energy when you're doing these things that it seems sweatless. It seems effortless. It's not effortless, but it just seems sweatless. It seems like, oh my God. And you, you have a, a fire and a desire to do it. When Joseph got to Potiphar's house, where am I going with this? Okay. When, when Joseph was at home, he was son number 11 out of 12. That joker wasn't in charge of nothing. When he was at home, he was the 11th out of 12 sons. And so there was only so many things that he could actually develop at home. He, he didn't know his brothers were doing him a favor. Once he wound up in Potiphar's house, He's 17 years old. He wakes up one morning and all of a sudden he says, well, let me get to work. And now I get to work on things that I didn't get to work on at home. And so he's working on stuff at Potiphar's house and he's doing stuff with the spirit of excellence. And all of a sudden God is favoring the work of his hands and he's learning stuff about himself that he would have never learned had he not been in Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar is noticing
noticing things about him that are, that seem sweatless to him, but that are uncommon. And this is not common. Like, I mean, this kid has it going on. And let me put this kid in charge of stuff. Why? Because the kid is walking in his divine assignment. Look at me. Listen, you were born with a divine assignment. You were born predisposed and pre-wired for your purpose. Now, you were ignorant of it. I was ignorant of it. None of us knew what we were born to do when we were born. But as we walk with God, as we get opportunities, as we live life, as we have experiences, then we notice stuff. We notice the Holy Spirit begins to reveal things to us about us and about what he's called us to do. Here's some points I can give you from this first point, and I, I'm, I'm excited about this message this morning. Here's the first thing. You are not here by accident. God didn't make any mistakes when he made you. Your life has a purpose. It is a tailor-made purpose just for you. My prayer is that you find it, follow it, and finish it before you die. Here's the next point. You were born with a mission. Put in the chat, say, I have a mission. You came into this world with a mission already in your spirit. And so you didn't know, like God told Jeremiah, I already sanctified you. I already gave you an assignment. Listen, this is an internal compass inside of you, leading you to do things that you didn't, you thought were happenstance. You thought were coincidence. No, it was the Holy Spirit leading you down this way. Here's the next point. As you have to find that path, as you discover what you're called to do, and, and this discovery is not a one-time event. Event. It is a journey. It is a lifetime of discovery. And that as you're connected to God and you're walking with Him, and, and things just seem to fall into place. Why? Because God is moving pieces around on the chessboard of your life. Why? Because you have God ordained, tailor made talents. Say that. Say, I have tailor made talents talents. You ever notice that you just do stuff that, that is so natural to you and it is not random. This is assigned to you and that other people are like, how in the world does she do that? L listen, like if you can sing, now I don't sing, but if you can sing, I could wake you up at three o'clock in the morning. You can still have crust on your eyes. You haven't brushed your teeth yet, but if you can sing, I could wake you up at three o'clock in the morning and boom, you sing, right? It's innate. There are other people that work hard, go to take singing lessons, go to all kind of, they can't do what you do. Why? Because you were born with it. Oh, come on, man. So, as I put in the chest, say, some things I was just born with. There's some things I was born with. Why? Because I was wired to leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased. Say amen to that. All right. I'm trying to keep myself, but I, I feel like preaching this morning. Number two, you must keep the dream alive in your heart. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Got it. He was sold as a slave. Got it. But he kept the dream alive in his heart. I told you already that the, t the attack is against the assignment. The devil don't care about you. He's trying to stop your assignment. Thankfully, watch this. Instead of getting bitter, this arrogant kid, when he was at home, he was arrogant. He was proud as a peacock. But this arrogant kid that, that was strutting around this with this coat of many colors at home, he instead of getting bitter, he got better. He saw the setback as an opportunity to do things that he had never done at home. And he kept the dream alive. So here's some things you can learn from this second point. All right, here we go. Stay true to the vision. As a believer, you got to keep God's vision for your life before your very eyes. You got to meditate, medicate on it day and night, day and night. No matter what life throws your way, do not lose sight of the vision, which is your purpose. God placed something in your heart. God placed something in Joseph's heart. And, and so Joseph's story was not about slavery. Joseph's story was not about prison. Joseph's story was about being the prime minister of Egypt. Keep the big, keep the main thing, the main thing. Keep the promise before your eyes, even when you're dealing with the problems. And let me just say this, a dormant dream is still a dream. Put that in the chat. A dormant dream is still a dream. You may have a dream in your heart that's buried under layers of disappointment and layers of delay and layers of setbacks, but a dormant dream is still a dream. Joseph had the dream when he was a slave. Joseph had the dream when he was a prisoner, but the dream is not dead. A dormant dream is still a dream. You got to keep the dream alive. There will come a day when the Lord brings the dream to the forefront of your mind and says, today is the day. And so I love you. you there's, there's a Five words in the Bible that I love. I'm reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, and I love when it says, and it came to pass. Oh, glory 
word of God. And it came to pass. I, there's a book in heaven with my name on it, and there's plenty of spots in that book where it says, and it came to pass that on this particular day, God did this for Rick Pena. Come on, man. I love, and it came to pass. There's coming a day in your life where God will write, and it came to pass. You just got to keep holding on until that day comes. And while you're waiting, you got to get better and not get bitter. You, you Listen, you might be talked about. You might experience betrayal like Joseph did. You might experience de delays, but a delay is not a denial. You might experience troubling times and circumstances and situations. The people closest to you might turn their back on you. All of that. Got it. But instead of getting bitter, you need to choose to get better. And once you get better, you can do this. You can bloom where you have been planted. Say this, I will bloom where I, wherever God plants me, I'm going to bloom. Joseph didn't wait for the perfect conditions to pursue his purpose. Joseph didn't wait. He said, I have this dream and I'm just going to wait till one day God tells me, no, 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 no. He, saw it, he said, what can I do now? And he started doing everything with a spirit of excellence now. He did it when he was in Potiphar's house. He did it when he was in the prison. Listen, you can't wait for all the conditions to re be right because the conditions are not always going to be right. Listen, you need to start right where you are and you need to bloom where you have been planted. Say amen to that. Number three, make the most of the situation you're in. Joseph woke up one morning and he was a slave. It was not what he wanted. It was not what he expected. But like most of us, we, he had to learn how to deal with pain and disappointment. Listen, I know what it's like to wake up and it's like, hey, this is not what I wanted. Like, you know, like, like my, but, but say this, put this in the chat. My state is not my fate, right? And so, so right now, this current state, I might be dealing with disappointment. I might be dealing with a setback. I might be dealing with whatever, but I know that this is my state is not my fate. I know that greater is coming for me. Joseph provided the natural, God provided the super. Joseph said, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. Let me, let me get out here and start working and work with a spirit of excellence. And then let me maximize my now so God can give me my next. So here's some lessons from this point. Seize your current season. Put that in the chat. I will seize my current season. Once again, don't wait for perfect conditions to make a move. Because if you're waiting for per perfect conditions, you're probably never going to make the move. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 4, I love this verse. This is what Solomon said. Farmers who wait for the perfect weather to plant, never plant. And if they wait for the clouds, to, for the sky to be clear, they're never going to harvest. In other words, he's saying there's people that need to go sow, but oh, I'm going to wait for the conditions to be perfect. Then you're never going to sow. When it comes time to reap, oh, it looks like it's going to rain. Mm, I don't know. Then you're never going to reap. He's saying, don't worry about the circumstances and the situations. You just got to do whatever you're called to do and just do it now. Do it now. Put in the chest. Say, I'm going to do it now. Just do it now. It, it, the, the conditions were not ideal. He, worked, he woke up. He was a slave. He said, okay, fine. This is not ideal. This is not what I wanted, but I'm going to work it out for my advantage. I'm going to make the most of this particular opportunity. You have to make the most of, your, of every opportunity. Why? Because grace meets effort. Put in the chat, grace meets effort. Joseph provided the effort. God provided the grace. And so he was successful in everything that he did. Wait a minute, Brother Pena. Don't you teach the grace life? Yes, I do. Wait a minute, Brother Pena. Don't you teach that it's not about works? Yes, I do. Let me explain. Grace does not come by work, but grace comes for work. Let me explain. Grace doesn't come by work, but grace comes for work. God, you were not saved to sit. You were saved to serve. God didn't put his grace on you so you could be lazy. No, you need to get to work. Put in the chat, I will get to work. You need to get to work. Effort and grace are a winning combination. I put forth the effort. God puts forth the grace. Here's another point. Excellence is a stepping stone. Joseph did everything with the spirit of excellence. Therefore, Potiphar noticed him. Therefore, Potiphar promoted him. Therefore, he had favor with Potiphar. Why? Because he did everything with the spirit of excellence. Don't slack because your, your next level depends on it. You should do everything with a spirit of excellence. You, if you're doing it, if, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Why? You're doing it for the Lord. Don't do, don't do things halfway. I, I told you many times, there was an old rap song when I was a kid that said, I never, never half step because I'm not a half stepper. And if you want to call me, you can call me Dr. Pepper. But don't half step. 
Ain't no half-stepping in me. That's another rap song. But anyway, I'm not going to half-step. I came to God and I said, Lord, if I'm going to do this, I got to do this all the way. I never half-step because I'm not a half-stepper. That's what I told God. So listen, you got to do things and do things with a spirit of excellence. And watch this. Visibility is, is focused on consistency. So you will, you will be made visible as you're consistent. Not only do you do things with a spirit of excellence, but I'm talking about consistent excellence. Consist, put this in the chat. Consistent excellence gets noticed. If you do something excellent one time and you're like, oh, it didn't work. No, 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 no. But keep shining. Keep grinding. Consistent excellence will get noticed. People will notice that there's something special about you if you do everything with the spirit of excellence and you do it every time. I'm talking about being consistent. I'm talking about doing everything. If I'm going to put my name on it, if Rick Pena's name is on it, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it right. And, I, and I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do it with the spirit of excellence. And I'm going to go all the way. Like uh, uh, one of my mentors, Les Cornwall, uh, would tell other guys and say, people don't think that people just kept me and Rick around all these leaders, senior leaders kept me and Rick around because we look good. <laughs> Don't think that, 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 that just because they liked us. No, because we perform and we perform with a spirit of excellence every time. I mean, there needs to be a level of excellence and a level of consistency. People need to know that when, if they put you on it, you are a fire and forget person. They give you the assignment. If you say, I got it. If I tell you, if anybody that I'm doing something for gives me something and I say, I got it, they can forget about it. If I say I got it, you don't ever have to think about it again. As far as you're concerned, you could check it off. It's done. Why? Because if I say I got it, I got it. I'm going to do it with the spirit of excellence, and I'm going to do it with the spirit of excellence every time. Joseph knew that there was something greater on the inside of him. So he said, okay, well, I need to work here. What am I going to do? He started working with the spirit of excellence. God favored the work of his hands. God caused everything that he did to prosper. He got promoted. He was in charge of the whole operation. That's what will happen with you when you work with the spirit of excellence. Say amen to that. Even if it's not what you wanted, listen, you got to make the most of your now so you can get to your next. Number four, last point. Let me let you go. You've been picked for a purpose. Put in the chat, I have been picked for a purpose. The time that Joseph spent in Potiphar's house was part of a plan. See, let me return to something that God said to Joseph's great grandfather, Abraham. This is Genesis chapter 15. So God is having a conversation with Joseph's great grandfather. And so the, the, the word of the Lord, this is what it says. God says to Abraham, you can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land. He was talking about Egypt, where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. He's talking about Egypt. But I will punish the nation that enslaves them. And in the end, they're going to come away with great possessions, with great wealth. And then they will walk into the land flowing with milk and honey. So it was predestined that they were going to wind up in Egypt. How did they wind up in Egypt? Because of Joseph. God was going to use Joseph, the great grandson, to get the descendants of Abraham into Egypt. And then later, and they experienced great favor in Egypt for a while, for a long time. But then the Bible says, then there, there rose up a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And then that's how they wound up as slaves. So my point is that while Joseph was in Potiphar's house, he was learning the Egyptian system. He was, listen, there's a plan. There's a bigger plan here. So he was learning, what do I need to do? He was learning how Egyptians do things. He was not only that, he was working for the director of the secret service that worked directly for the king, the Pharaoh. So he was learning how Pharaoh did stuff because the way that Potiphar did stuff is the way that Pharaoh does stuff. And so he was dealing with one of the king's direct reports. He was learning, how does this thing work? Later, when he got to the prison, he was like, oh, snap. How does, how does, you know, how does, he was in charge of the whole prison. So he had to learn how to, how do you fill out the forms in Egypt? Like, how do they like the email emails formatted? Like he was learning stuff in the prison that he would have never learned in Potiphar's house. What am I, what am I saying? I'm saying there's a plan, doggone it. God is working out a plan. There are predestined pathways. There are some predestined paths that you have to take that you may not like it. That may be bitter. It may be frustrating. You may, you may be like, why is this happening to me? But he learned stuff in Potiphar's house. He needed to learn. He learned stuff in the prison. He needed to learn. And you will learn stuff right now that you need to learn because it's part of God's divine orchestration, but it's not going to happen if you get bitter instead of getting better. You got to understand that there's a bigger plan. You got to understand that you are expected, put this in the chat, I am expected to learn in every season. You're expected to learn. 
Every environment you walk into is a classroom. Joseph was learning stuff in Potiphar's house. Joseph was learning stuff in the prison. Every environment you walk into is a classroom. You're supposed to learn in every season. Why? Because your life is not haphazard. God is moving stuff around on the chessboard of your life. Say this, my life is not a mistake. It's not haphazard. God, God called me with a specific purpose. And so I'm leaning into my divine purpose and I'm leaning into it in faith, without a doubt, without wavering, knowing that I was chosen for greatness. Like Joseph, you have a greater purpose. You were picked for your purpose. And so as a believer, if you want to be mature, James says, you got to be patient. You got to develop patience in the process so that you can be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. So, so say this, say, I trust the process. Say this, I develop patience. Say this, say my purpose is unfolding right before my very eyes. Say amen to that. Ooh, that was a good message, y'all. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I declare that my life is not an accident. I'm on this planet because of your divine design. I affirm that I am pre-wired for the purpose that you have for me. Therefore, I embrace my destiny with open arms. I commit to keeping the dream alive, regardless of the storms. I commit to blooming wherever I have been planted, learning lessons along the way. I trust in your timing. You order my steps. So I acknowledge that you picked me for a purpose. I'm going to walk boldly in that calling. I thank you, Father, for the grace that is on my life to do everything with a spirit of excellence because I know that I'm doing it for you. Greater is coming for me because my life is a manifestation of your divine plans. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, please go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You get my notes for free. Sign up, get my notes, put in your email address there. I need you to do me a favor. Two things. Number one, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number two, Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Have a great day. Greater is coming for you. God bless you. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the Word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there. If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God. Or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we can leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us, and we pray that we will continue to be a blessing to you.